Dante, my name is Matthew Morville Vuxen, clean show Denny Beaters from Brantford, Ontario. I was born in Sioux, Ontario, and, uh, from Clean Show Nation in the Northwest Territories. I want to welcome everybody to the workshop. So let's come on in and let's have some fun. <clears throat> All right, here we are at the studio, everybody. I think this is a good time for my friend to show you around a bit while I get ready. Okay, welcome everybody. Um, so my name is Matthew Morville Buxton, and this is my studio here in Peterborough. I want to just quickly go over the things on my table, some of the basics that I use every day. This isn't all of my stuff, but it's what I need right now. I'm kind of in a process of only using what I need for necessity and time. So I'll just want to go over quickly some of the basics that I use as a beater that specializes in two needles. Um, <clears throat> these are the working needles. These are the ones stitching down your beads of rows, like also known as applique. And I use size 10 and 11 beading needles for picking your beads up and guiding your rows. I also have my thread here. I use Nymo bonded nylon. This is my favorite type of thread. Black, white, you can get all kinds of colors. Have a thimble, sharp scissors. Um, you might want to have a white fabric pencil that you can draw on fabric and you can follow your designs that way. I have, uh, you might want to get a big beading mat. These are pretty important. A bigger one, I actually need a bigger one. Definitely need a sketchbook if you want to remember what your designs are. So for example, here's a sketch I did in March 2020 of a piece that I'm working on right now that I'm really excited to finish. And This is sinew, artificial sinew. You can get this at the craft stores. The ones on the reserves are the best. You are definitely going to want beads. As you can see, you got to Big selection of beads. It's a, been a lifetime of collection, but not really because it only started in 2016. But so what I want to do today is just show you the basics of two needle applique. This is just going to be a little brochure or brochet. I don't even know how to say it. It's a little pin on your thing, and um, I'm just going to do a couple of lines, a little circle. Okay, so this is fabric stabilizer and this is interfacing they're kind of called the same things this is what you can bead on a lot of people use this i'm sure most beaters or people around them have seen this this you get at the fabric stores as well this is interfacing that's really good for sewers and quilters they put it um, in their material to stabilize it and make it more secure it's really strong, durable stuff. I like it a lot. I use it a lot. So here I put it on our piece that we're doing today on the back. Here's the front, the wool that we'll do the bead work on the design. And this is going to secure the thread and the beads. And then we'll put a piece on the so a piece on the back, and that will be nice and secure. So I like to use this stuff on um, wool, especially in the hides when I do bigger pieces like the vest. And then this will have um, lining. You can. So I also do vests. I made this vest in, uh, I don't remember what year, 2017, I think it was. It took me about 500 hours. I'm really proud of it. It's, um, so that's uh, kind of what my journey is all about is making things for myself because, like I said earlier, you got to end up working for yourself in life because people are not going to do things for you the way you think all the time. So... Um, <clears throat> these are some of the materials you're going to want, and I think we're ready to get started. Okay, so I put the needle through the center there, and I'm going to pick up a bead, kind of using whatever I want on the mat here. Oh yeah, it's another thing, you're going to want to get a beading mat. So I put that guy down, 
He's going to be the center of my little circle here. There's a couple ways. I'm just going to use this needle again to put it down, tack them down. So you put the needle right in front of it, pulling it through tight, snug. So there it is. That's pretty solid. Now I'm going to start beating around it. So I'm going to bring this needle up through, um, up again right beside him. Okay, so now I have my thread through. So I'm going to put, I want to wrap some beads around it. So I'm just going to pick whatever color. It's not hugely important. I mean, it is, this is just a base book. Maybe I'll just go with a little pattern here of black and orange. So that's the thing about this type of bead work because it's like you're literally picking up bead by bead and it takes a long time. Huh. <clears throat> I hope everybody's enjoying themselves so far. I uh, kind of miss having the workshops because of this pandemic. It's been pretty challenging. I'm sure it's challenging for a lot of people and for me to uh, share some of my abilities and what I can do as an artist and it's uh, it's important to be able to expand your knowledge to have things to take up your time through creativity and also support yourself things that you really enjoy that are fun that are good for your life that are um, they put out a lot of good energy so beadwork is really good for that because it teaches you patience and it just really, really grounds you and sometimes that's what people need because they get too busy or carried away in their lives. And sometimes it's good just to slow down and reflect on what you have and what you need to survive and to be happy. Those are really important. So uh, we're going to continue on here. I actually took the beads off. I didn't like them. That's part of it. So I took them off and I'm going to change the color to the blue. And the black, I'm going to wrap them around the center bead to make a little circle. And this will, yeah, these are a little bit more my colors. So here I have my working needle, right? I have this guy with one thread, not at the end. And I'm going to use this to stitch them down. You got to remember this is two needles, so we usually stitch down every bead. Even though some people think that's crazy. Well, I would say sometimes I think what other beaters do is crazy. So just remember who's your teacher. And what you've learned from them and what you continue to learn and what works for you. Because that's what really matters as an artist. So these are pretty small, but... That's just how it goes sometimes. So I'm going to tack down all these beads around to make a pretty good circle, secure it. It's kind of probably hard to see on the black. So here I go on the outside. I'm going on the outside of those three beads there. Pulling the needle through. Here I go. Here's how it looks coming through in the back. See, as you can see, the other needle just sits there because it's going to what we use to tack and pick up our beads. Here I keep just wrapping around. I use my fingernail and thumb to guide the beads where I want them to go and I pull it snug. Oh, we're running into problems already. <laughs> I got I don't know what happened, but uh, oh god. And we're back. Just had a little knot there. Not really. I just pulled through. So it's pretty easy. It's pretty basic here. Uh, this is just an like I guess said introductory to two needle and the style that all. It's all I do really. So you got to keep pulling them through. Okay, so I'm so I'm on the. Other uh, blue bead there. I guess I should turn it. Yeah. I'm pulling it through. So I'm almost done. I gotta add some more beads with 
bigger needle. So I got three beads left there. <clears throat> and just tacking them over. Try and pull my thread through. Careful, don't get your threads tangled up. Lots of big problem for beginners is because they get they got needles and thread flying everywhere. So that's pretty good. Um, so I'm going to tack down that last bead. Again, like if you want to learn from me, this is how I do my bead work. So it's uh, kind of time consuming, but it ends up to look really good and secure. And that's what you want. If you want to wear your stuff out and, and decorate yourself or whatever, and you want to wear fashion, it's kind of important to make spend the extra time to make things. So what I'm doing here is I'm just gonna uh, use the the beading needle to go through those last two beads there to kind of join up the circle. Maybe I'll just go through the one bead because it's gonna be fine no matter what. So yeah, I just joined that up and then I get, you gotta get rid of this needle, right? Cause now it's in the way. So what you do with these is you just put them, bury it inside, pull it through. So it's gone, pull it tight because you don't want to see the thread. Should have used black thread, but it's fine. Maybe I'll grab the black thread actually for the next one. So then you want to tie a knot to tie them off. So what you do is just wrap it under, pull it snug down to the, so it's flush. And then pull it and then there's your knot and then do the same for the working needle because that can't, it's good to just get in a habit of tying knots so your work's always really secure. So that's how I tie my knots. I just wrap it around, pull it. You can practice this on material. So that's secure. So there we go. There's our little circle. So for, and also I started off, you know, this could do just to, a good idea just to have your whip stitch on stuff to hold your material to itself. And now I have the center beads, so I don't really need it. So for our, let's take it off. So okay, so we tied them off. Now I'm gonna. Oh, that knot's not good, but. Yeah, so you just want to make sure your knots, everything are lined up on the bottom there. So there's other ways you could put your um, your designs on. There's a lot of different ways. There's people use different techniques. I just sometimes I I like freehand a lot, so I'm just gonna do a little pattern here. I'm gonna try to follow it. I don't know, something like that, right? <clears throat> there's other ways, there's better material to use. I like the flower paste, I'll show that in the next video. So then I'm gonna take this guy because he's still underneath and I'm gonna put him up right beside the circle, edge of, right on beside a bead there and pull him through. And then I'm gonna put on my next row of colored beads that I've picked. So I'm just gonna do a whole row of red following the template that I just drew on there. So this is freehand. There's a lot of freehand in applique that I like to use. I find it makes the work a little, um, a little, it flows a lot better. You can see the movements and instead of maybe just being all orderly all the time. But, so I'm holding them tight to the beads so that way they stay in there, right? All kind of lined up. So maybe I'll just do about, I don't know, say I... All right, so we're gonna use seven beads because that's our sacred number. Seventh fire. That's the company that's been on quite a roll. Four, three, that's seven. All right, so here we go. Now we're on, what bead are we on now? We're still tacking down every bead. I mean, you don't have to do every bead. You could do every second bead, but your work's gonna look 
a little different. I mean, there's lazy stitch. There's all kinds of styles. Just learn whatever you want, whatever's good for you. If you want to learn from one technique, it might be a good idea to kind of master one technique first before you start jumping all over the place. Just the fact of doing beadwork is good enough, but you got to stick to it. That's the thing. If you, you can't call yourself a beater if you're not doing it all the time. I mean, I think that's seven. Yeah, so I'm at the end of the row there. I'm still holding it, right? I got a little, I got a little squiggly line going there, but that's okay because So now we're at the end. So there's a couple ways you can hide it. You can put it back through or you can just, I'm just gonna put it straight down right in front of it. Pull the big one through tight. And then you're gonna wanna tie the ends off again, remember? So you, gotta, you always gotta tie and thread and make knots and stuff. That's just part of it. So tying these two off So where am I going next? I've got another, see the, the thing with this, it kind of wears off so you can you can always redraw it. I mean, it's there's, I'll show another style next time for uh, having a better template that you can follow. This is just a basic. So I'm gonna put this in, again, right beside. So I'm taking the big needle. Okay, so now we're just have one more row. I added the other one there. So again, you're gonna take your big needle and put it up very close as you can to center there. You can trim that stuff. So what did I do? What did I say for over here? I got this little pattern of green beads for the last row. Four, five, six, seven. So there's our little design. Could probably use another one, but I think it works. <laughs> Gotta get my working needle. Tie the knot. And it's ready for blast off. So you're gonna have to obtain your beads if you wanna. and all the materials and tools and just kind of build up your inventory so you have access to everything whenever you need it. And then, and then the fun really starts when um, you're able to start making a little bit of money off your sales. You can, earrings are really popular. There's some popular um, items throughout the communities that people really want. I myself do sometimes, I do commissions here and there and I am working on two amulets of um, a turtle and a lizard, a gecko, which is from what I understand, pretty significant to the Southern Indian tribes in the Midwest and America. Okay, so we have our piece here. I added another row because I wasn't happy with it. Sometimes that happens. So it's just a little, it's a starfish. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna trim this stuff, the access interfacing that we don't need anymore, right? And trim the little threads a bit. So this is, as you can imagine, you can see my cuffs, I'll talk about later, but this could be, um, you could make this into a bracelet pretty easily. You can stitch it onto something or you could stitch it onto your backpack or a jacket or, that's the fun thing about beadwork, it's just, you could literally put it on almost on anything. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to make another trace of the back so if you notice I cut at the edge of the material because you don't want to waste your material and maybe cut it in the center you want to preserve everything you have and only use what you need 
because you might you never know what what could happen where you can't have that material if you waste it well, so i'm just going to do a simple whip stitch with the sinew give it a nice finish um you won't really have time to do all the edge work so i'm going to hide the knot in the inside of the So there's the knot on the inside, so I'm just gonna hold it close. I think I like the, I kinda like the stitch that gets wrapped around. I kinda like that one. So you're gonna hold it, and then you're gonna wrap it around, pull it, so there's your first one. And then you're gonna just keep going a little spaces apart. Make sure you go through both pieces of the wool. So it's just a simple basic sewing stitch just to protect the inside. Kind of round up your edges as you go. There's a lot of different ways you could do edging with beads, all kinds of different styles, and it takes a lot of practice to get to know. I mean, you can find out which one's like you. The bead finish looks good too, but just for the sake of time, I'm going to just do the whip stitch because this is just a simple little demonstration. You could you can add this onto a clip, bar pin, or you could add it, glue it onto a magnet, put it on your fridge. Those are always fun. You could decorate your door. So this is one of my, like I was saying, there's a lot of different things you can do. So this is one of my good friend's um, pieces of work. Uh, one of my students, she, we've made keychains. So we made the leather. She actually made the leather herself because she's a leather worker. And then you, we stitched beadwork onto there and we were making keychains. And here's mine that I, that I also like that just get worn in. So those are my keys. I've got sold some of those. So that's just an idea that you could have for this piece of beadwork. Um, you can even beat it like that and then trim the edges, kind of a clean cut. So, or you could possibly stitch it onto some hide, make a little bracelet for yourself. You can put it on the hide. You can make it into a choker, possibly. You can, it's endless, right? Oh, and I found a magnet. So I could cut the magnets, cut it around there. It sticks on this side, and then just put it on the fridge, and it's a decorative piece. So it's a lot of fun. You can decide what you want to do. So that's just an example of some simple techniques of the beadwork. And uh, I want you guys to... Um, let Arts Can connect if you want to have any more beading workshops online, some bead kits we could put together. So just get a hold of uh, the people in Arts Can and then they'll get a hold of me and then we'll put together some kits or we could possibly want you, everybody out there to the use to think about maybe some ideas that things they want to be for themselves or their friends or maybe they want to sell it or they want to gift it to one of their somebody that's close to them so it's a really good um it's a really good methodology to get into the the habit or not the habit but the just the means of creating for other people and for yourself with uh putting good energy and good intentions into your work and into your everyday life because that's the type of energy that you want to have as you grow older and as you live in this world that's changed very quickly as everybody's noticed through the pandemic and having art um, is important to be able to kind of use your time up. You enjoy doing it. You can make some money from it. You're learning new things. You can teach people. It's the opportunities once you become an artist and become really good at what you do kind of 
it really changed your life for the better and that's why I'm so proud to be an artist and where I am now to to stick with it and everything it's done for me just by doing beadwork and following the stories and the teachings from my mother my my, was my teacher she's a residential school survivor I learned in Brantford in 2016 at the Women Culture Center in Samuel Thomas and it's uh, it's just been something that I've um, that kind of saved my life in a sense because everything I was going through and as a man it's it's important to be able to release the energy in a good way and art is uh, and creativity gives me that and also that I love so much about beadwork is just the colors, the amount of colors of beads that you could pick and design your own colors. You really have a lot of freedom to express your designs and your whatever you like or whatever you're into. And uh, so, and also uh, just to say for all the youth out there too, just to stay positive, help one another, focus on learning something new that you might enjoy, that you've always wanted to try, start research and studying about it. Uh, focus on language, culture, and stories during this time because everybody has spending more time at home. They can't leave in terms of the lockdown and everything's going to change when the pandemic lifts. So you need to come out of this as a stronger person to face the new challenges that, that's gonna, that humanity is going to be placed under all over the world. It's not just in Canada. There's people all over the world that um, are facing the same so there's similar situations so they want to also come out of this stronger in, in a better place for themselves and for their family so work on yourself during this time and i found um i just happened to find this it was just hanging out it's actually the uh loom i made for the beaded uh, uh loom beading so that's something i do quite a bit as well i kind of get into it's fun so just another tool another technique as you can see, it's way more heavier than the other stuff on the table. And uh, so, yeah, remember to get a hold of Arts Canada. I want, I want to do a shout out to Joe Haven, Pecanjicum, Fort Albany, out of Wapiscad, Shisatshu, and Manitoushish. And also Sioux Lookout, because that's where I was born, and they got that on there as well. So, you can't forget where you come from. and. I got the, the Ojibwe people, they, got a, they hold a special place in my heart because I was born on their territory and I'm a northerner, I've been living in Ontario for a long time. And, um, and once again, I just want to say Masu Cho and thanks for everybody for watching this. Uh, yeah, kids, I just wanted, I forgot to mention about the cuffs. This is uh, another, again, another example. So these are actually on the, on the black wool. Um, so this one's... A similar made the Mandalorian from Star Wars because I'm a big Star Wars fan and this one is a geometric pattern that I made up that uh, kind of represents codes for it's something that I'm getting into because I'm, I'm working on uh, writing a novel right now about a, a hunter and it's a genre of indigenous futurism so there's actually going to be um, so a lot of illustrations and more information about beadwork in there and these are again another um, examples of things you can do with your beadwork yeah we can't forget about jeeks actually i, I uh, apologize jika um, again here's uh my students my friends here um a uh, piece of beadwork she did there's another idea that you can have for yourself and your little pets and your loved ones it's just another pool poodle so Schnoodle, but 